This is my friend's four-wheel camper that he has completely rebuilt. I've been helping with the fabric elements, like the pop top. Stay tuned for a video on the process of remaking that. This video tutorial covers how to make a box cushion cover, specifically on a four-wheel camper fold-out couch, but I will cover all of the upholstery skills and steps that you need to sew a zippered box cushion cover and a bit on installation. Let's get started. So he's got this wood on the back and then, you know, where it's going to connect. This is the seat cushion, one of the bottom seat cushions for the couch area. So I need to cut a top and a bottom panel that's going to go around a panel for the zipper. So it'll actually be two pieces of fabric. Put the zipper in the middle. Bottom of the wood. Uh, I'm gonna measure around, but he's got the zipper marked from here to here. And on this cushion, because it has the wood on the bottom, it's not gonna give it all. I can't fold it, I can't bend it, and so the zipper has to go around this corner and around this corner so that you you can slide it straight in and out. If I put the zipper from here to here, it's almost guaranteed to break. You do not want to have to replace a zipper. I'm going to have it come around at least a couple of inches. These are the actual measurements without any seam allowance. You need to decide how much seam allowance you want and then probably err on the side of cutting a little too big because you can always take away material, but you can't add material and that can be a problem if you cut it too small. I'm going to go with a half an inch of seam allowance on either side. I'm going to cut this to 30 inches to 24.5 inches. The panel that does not have the zipper to 5.5 inches. The panel that has the zipper, I'm going to need two pieces. Let's see, two three inch pieces, um, three inches in width. That should give me plenty of material to install the zipper and then still have it be the right size. Now, let's measure my zipper panel. 36 inches, regular panel piece. I'm going to add a few inches in there because it's nice to have a little bit of play. When you're putting your zipper in, to have the fabric overlap a little bit so that the actual zipper pull is hidden behind a, a little a bit of extra fabric. Instead of 36, I'm just gonna cut it at 38. For the longer piece that goes around the front, I'm gonna cut it at, put it at 75, just to be safe. You can always take it off later. Okay, let's cut some fabric. This fabric is very plain, but it does still have a grain to it. So I want to make sure that there's consistency across the project if I have more than one cushion to make. I want to make sure I make all the cushions with the grain going the same direction. So I'm just going to mark it and make sure that on all the cushions, the grain is going from front to back. So this is the selvage edge of the fabric. You can see when it was made, these little holes that you'll always see in a selvage are from where it was hooked to the machine. This can be part of my seam allowance, but I don't want it to be showing. I'm going to leave it, but I want to make sure where I actually stitch is on the other side of these holes. Maybe for structural, but mostly just for visual appeal. Now we're going to put the cushion on top of it and make sure that the lines line up. This is essential. Really easy to cut things too small and then you want to cry. When you're giving yourself a seam allowance, be generous but not too crazy. If I give myself tons of extra fabric, I'm gonna end up with a super sloppy cushion cover. You're gonna to have to keep trimming and trimming and picking out seams. So now I'm all ready to cut. I've done my dummy check. I've checked all my seam allowances. Everything's good. If you have access to a rotary cutter, use it. If you don't, a normal pair of sharp fabric scissors is fine. I'm gonna cut two of these, one for the top, one for the bottom exactly the same. So I've measured this and this piece of fabric is going to be the piece of fabric that goes around the outside of this cushion. So let's do a dummy check. Let's make sure that this piece is long enough. So I definitely have enough material there. Side. 
Okay, these two pieces are going to be on either side of the zipper. And I added an inch and a half of width compared to the width here to compensate for the zipper, which will take about an inch of fabric and then a quarter inch on either side for the seam allowance. Let's check the length. Plenty long, I have a couple of extra inches to play with. I'm gonna teach you how to put a zipper in for a project like this. Uh, the way that I prefer and I think really the easiest way in this situation. These are the two pieces that are going to be on either side of the zipper. I'm going to baste these two pieces together and basting just means a really long stitch that's easy to pick out and once it's been basted all the way down you open it up, place the zipper right side down. The regular stitch I sew all the way down and then all the way back up the other side then pick out the basted stitch and you have a zipper that's perfectly placed. I'm gonna leave a wider seam allowance than usual because this is where the zipper will be sewn in and I wanna make sure that I have enough room for the zipper to fit. This basting stitch is a very loose stitch just meant to hold the fabric in place while you do some other stitching and then it's meant to be taken out. All you need to do is make sure that this is pulled out flat and there's nothing folded underneath and then you can just sew up the other side. Trusty seam ripper, perfect right now. What you should have is that the threads, because it's basted, are so easy to, to pull and to break. If I feel any resistance at all, I'm going to stop because it means that I've gone into this fabric on the side. But if I keep it nice and steady in the middle, I should be okay. Also, if you put this red side down, it helps guide you as you go. This is the most annoying part, is pulling out all the threads probably use a piece of tape or a lint roller or something to do this a little bit faster. If you find this kind of work soothing, just do it by hand. This is my piece that's going to go all the way around. So let's tack it in. definitely have enough fabric if it matters if you want the zipper pull to be here or if you want it to be on the other side in my case I want the zipper pull to be on this side so what I'm going to do when I sew these two pieces together is I'm going to sew them together here but then I'm going to leave some of this extra fabric so that there can be a little bit of a compartment where that zipper can seat down in it'll keep the zipper pull safe and also just you know, looks a little bit nicer and more finished. I've got these two parts meeting together. What you can do, same thing, is sew these two together and then take up the slack with a little bit of a compartment at the end. For now, we tack these together. Sides. I wouldn't do that with a metal zipper, but with a plastic zipper, cut away. Perfect. Now I want to take this fabric and fold it up so it makes a little pocket and it completely covers that zipper pull. We've already measured it so we know we have plenty of fabric. 
Uh, you can baste right here, or if you don't mind working with pins, also pins can be taken out and it's easier to take out than a basting stitch. We're going to do another dry run with those pieces all put together. Here is the back side of the seat. I'm reinforcing this part right here because that's where it bumps up against the edge of the compartment. I reinforced with vinyl and hopefully that will keep the fabric from being damaged and just you know add a little bit of extra cushion as it gets opened over and over again. It's our final dry run where we make sure that this piece fits with the side pieces. We prepare to sew it together. I know that I want my zipper. Whoops, see? Already. My zipper goes over here. I'm gonna lay this all out. Nope, look at troubles. When I'm sewing this to the main seat piece, this side it doesn't matter how the corners turn out because I am establishing the corners. When I sew the second side on, it really matters if your corners line up. This is my safety valve, the bottom part of the zipper, and when all of this gets pulled in tight, this extra I can either take it out by making a pocket or I can take it out by making a new seam, pulling it in tight. This is the part I sew last. So here's my zipper. This is where it starts. And I'm going to line it up more or less with my line right here. Depending on how precise you like things, you might want your zipper to be perfectly in line on either side. But you might have to push or pull one way or the other. I'm going to start sewing right here next to my safety valve so that here's my beginning. I pull it nice and tight as I go and then when I get to the end here I can see just how much I have left and decide if I want to cut it off or make a pocket. I'm just going to pin this before I move it. do is just make sure that both of these are nice and flat. If this one's puckered at all a little bit, it will show in your cushion. Coming up on the corner, what I can do to remind myself is on the corner, these, uh, this piece that goes around the side, I'm going to snip so that the fabric pulls around that corner easier. So to remind me, I can just go ahead and snip right now within my quarter to half an inch or whatever seam allowance I'm using. This is to remind me not to go cruising past and miss my mark. So I'm gonna make three snips and this should give me enough to ease me around the corner. What I wanna do is I wanna sew this nice and round. I don't wanna come to a stop and then turn and then sew again because then it's gonna be square. And what I want is a nice little rounded corner. Coming up onto what's almost the corner. Remember, I'm staying on the inside of those holes. And I'm just pulling using my little easement snips to keep it nice and tight as I come around. Kind of flattening it out. If you need to, you can make some more snips. This machine will go so fast if I let it. The reason this looks like that and I'm sewing it like this is because <laughs> this is where my selvage is and I'm trying to sew in the inside of those holes. See how my little ease snips help it make it around the corner? Okay, I'm coming up to my um, zipper pocket. So I just want to remove that pin and keep on going. Now we're getting to our um, end here. And what you don't wanna do, what I mentioned, didn't mention before, is have your final stitch be on a corner. So 
We don't have it on our corner. This is gonna make this last corner really easy. And then we get to deal with the end or where the pieces finally come together. Don't leave yourself doing all the work on a corner. It'll make you crazy. So we're back around to where we started. Here is our safety valve. So get to decide what we're gonna do with it. Leave the material, cut it, fold it, and have another pocket on this side. In this case, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna leave this folded up nice so that the zipper is on the inside of the pocket, and this extra is just covering it, and the cushion will still be nice and tight. Okay, before we go any further, we're gonna definitely wanna try this on. Feels pretty good. Uh, since I also plan on putting a piece of batting all the way around, oh, and this is also needs to get pulled tight on the other side, this feels really good. The seams line up with the foam underneath. They don't overhang and they're not too tight in here. So that feels good, both this way and this way. Get ready to sew the final side on. Now we are to the part where the critical aspect is that the corners line up. If your corners don't line up, your cushion's just gonna look like weird and wonky in relation to itself. I am going to mark the corners really, really well so that when I set it all up, it's very obvious as to where I want the top to be compared to the bottom. So I flatten this out right here. I've got this nice 45. Helps too. All right, let's pin it and see how it feels on the other side. When everything's lined up. This pin, in a minute I'm gonna put a pencil mark on there, needs to line up exactly with this corner right here and this line right here. So this line and this line are gonna meet up exactly. So let's do that to all four corners. So this part's still puckering up and it could use another little notch to ease it. Well, I just don't wanna get too close to the stitching, just enough so it'll kinda lay down flat. Now all four of my corners are marked, and if this piece matches the bottom piece exactly, I should be able to line up the corners, and all of this perimeter should line up completely. If there's anything special on your cushion that needs to line up, for instance, my reinforcement part that I did goes toward the front of the cushion, so I'm putting that here on the opposite side of the zipper, which goes in the back. Any special adjustments like that, get them into place. Then. I wanna start sewing in the back. I still have two places where there is some play, which is both ends of the zipper where I have the pocket. When I get to the pockets, I wanna make sure that this stays square to the seams that I have so that I don't end up with some weird instance like this. I'm gonna keep it pinned and I'm gonna keep it square, but if I have to, I can use this to tick in just a little bit or to tick out in order to keep my corners lined up. Here are my corner marks. This piece is gonna get the same treatment as right here. It's going to get these ease marks cut into it. But still, I want this to be the spot that lines exactly up with that line. Now here is the opportunity to pull it in at all if I need to. I'm gonna make sure that I have enough or that it's looking good between here and here before I pass. Okay, so I just turned this corner and 
and ended up off just a tiny bit. Um, I'm not too worried about it because this is the back, this is the zipper corner, but what I don't want it to do is affect the front where I do want it to be perfect. So I've got this pocket right here that I can play with. So I'm gonna make sure before I start sewing any further that these are lined up and ready to go. And if I have to, I can pull this out just a little bit so that I can make sure that this front lines up perfectly. I've got a little play here, so I am going to take out just a little bit. See how that looks. Okay, much better. Also, the cool thing about fabric is it's a little bit more forgiving than wood and metal and a lot of other things in that you can push it and pull it and stretch it and compress it a little bit and make it work in a lot of cases. Save yourself a lot of trouble if you keep checking and rechecking and that way you won't have to pick it out later. So I'm checking to make sure things line up before I sew them. That way if I feel like there's a little bit more play in this one, I can feed it through a little harder than I feed the top through. But so far, this looks to be lining up pretty good. And this is the front of the cushion so this is the most critical part. Since this is the front and this is more critical, I'm gonna make sure that these come through nice and even. When I get to my safety valve, I'm gonna check and do the adjustments then. Sure enough, I've got a little bit of play, which uh, I can take this out just a little bit, but I still wanna keep it tight. but it's by the zipper so it should be okay. Home stretch. Always baby your zipper. You do not ever want it to fail. Once I line up all the seams with the edges, you can see that there is still some play, there's still some room in here. I can decide if I want to take it off and re-sew, but just re-sew in an eighth of an inch, which means it would pull an eighth of an inch here and an eighth of an inch here, it would pull it in like a quarter of an inch and make it really tight, or I could put some batting on the inside around the foam and it would fluff it up with the batting. It all depends on how tight you really want it. Yeah, well, they line yeah, us better this better. way, too. Oh, wow, these... <gasps> Look at that. This might be really hard now that I think about it. Get in there. Yeah, it does. Okay, I have an idea. You gotta put the hinge on everything first. And... There's the... So it should go on that edge. You can feel it like. Do you want me to pull that back? Is that helpful? Sure. Or does it not really matter? It's just fun to be, you know, work together. <laughs> <laughs> 
something, sure is not fun. something we do a lot. I know, same with me and Noel. We just do our own things. Steve like and I spent every waking it's like moment we're not level together here. today. No. Oh, so because it's so tight, you need the angle you need them. You need them chiseled, but I think we'll make. Yeah, that's. Dang. You like to run a tight ship, don't you? Tight. Let me let me, let me just get that. Is this correct? Yes. The only Zippers option. on that Zipper bottom down. corner, right? So I think we can do this. sink, double burner stove, a full extension slides, a lot of storage, furnace, full refrigerator, We've got operating windows thanks to Noel, and now a place to chill. This is just shy of a queen bed, and then this is a full bed with a, a fold-out settee back. Two kids sleep there. Perfect. 